Hey guys, um, in this lesson we're going to be learning exactly how is the best way to calculate atomic mass. Um, we will have a, a worksheet that I'll have ready for you in class. Um, I'll photocopy it. I'll preview it in the video, uh, but you don't need to copy it all down. I'll have a photocopy for you. Um, and in this do now, um, there are parts of it that you can copy down and we'll work on um, tomorrow in class, so you'll put it in your classwork. But I did notice that there are some parts that are just far too long for me to expect you to copy it. So the parts that I think are acceptable for you to copy are circled in red. Um, and what's circled in blue, I think that's too long. Um, and I'll fill in the answers for you here, um, and you can just sort of think about them and memorize them, but I wouldn't expect you to copy that entire paragraph. Um, if you do copy it, that is totally fine, and it'll only help you, but I know how much writing can be um, the last thing you want to do sometimes. So I'll fill in the answers, and then we'll get into the lesson. Okay, so here are my answers. Um, I'll read it out loud for you. It says that um, isotopes are atoms of the same element, meaning they have the same number of protons, but they have different numbers of neutrons. Because isotopes have different numbers of neutrons, they also have different mass numbers. Because elements have different isotopes with different masses, the only way to assign a general mass to a particular element is to make a weighted average of all of the isotopes of that element. The most common isotopes of a particular element contribute most significantly to the atomic mass. This number is then recorded under the element symbol on the periodic table. So today's focus is the weighted average itself um, and the calculation of atomic masses by using mass numbers um, and then lining them up against values that we know on the periodic table. So basically, this is going to be um, practiced today. All right, so please make sure that you copy down the rest of this do now for just definitions and um, these electron questions, and then we'll do the under your classwork and your binder, and we'll do it tomorrow in class. All right, so the mini lesson. Today, we are going to focus on three things. We are going to find the mass of all of the isotopes, then of a particular element, and then we'll find the percent abundance in decimal form of each of the isotopes. We'll multiply the mass of each isotope by its percent abundance, and we'll sum them. And these are steps that you definitely need in your Cornell notes, because those are the steps for finding an atomic mass, and that will never change on any question that you do. So it'll always be these three steps. Make sure you have them. All right, now here's an example. An element has three isotopes. One isotope has a mass of 32 AMU, and a percent abundance of 18%. The second isotope has a mass of 30 AMU and a percent abundance of 2%. The third isotope has a mass of 33 AMU and a percent abundance of 80%. Um, keep those numbers in mind. I'm going to flip to the next page. All right, so simple questions first. Which isotope will contribute most significantly to the atomic mass? That's going to be whichever isotope has the greatest abundance. And um, the one that I noticed in the question had the most abundance was this one, isotope number 3, that had a mass of 33, because it had an abundance of 80%. So I'm going to write that in now. And then the second question is, to which mass number, 30, 32, or 33, will the average be closest, and why? So generally, whichever um, isotope has the greatest abundance, in this case, isotope 3, then that's going to be the one that contributes the most, and therefore the average will be closest to that number. So my guess is that the average will be closest to 33. There is, this is not always going to be true, um, based on just math, but um, it's usually going to be true. So I made a little table to organize my three masses and the 3% abundances in decimal form. One thing to point out, 
which is that um, in the question it said that the percent abundance of isotope number two was two percent, and I wrote 0 0.02 because that that's how you basically take the number that they give you and you divide it by 100 in order to get the decimal form. Um, so there was 18 became 0.18, 2 became 0 0.02, and 80 became 0 0.80. So to find the mass contribution, what you need to do is multiply the mass number by the percent abundance. And you'll get a number that is smaller than this number. Um, however, if you have an abundance which is really high, like 80%, then it'll be s smaller than the mass number, but it'll, but it'll be closer. So, for instance, if you did 33 times 1, you would get 33. So 33 times 0.8 is going to be almost close to 33, but not all the way there. Um, so, I'll, so you need a calculator, and you need to multiply this number times this number, this number times this number, to get these contributions. Um, I'll pause the video so you can, or you pause the video so you can calculate that, and I'll have the answers when you come back. One of the things that strikes me when, about these um, mass contributions is how small that one is and how large that one is. And it's totally explained by the percent abundance. The percent abundance is only 2% in this one, so the contribution is very small. And the percent abundance is 80% in this one, so it's much larger. So to find the atomic mass, though, you're going to take the contributions of each of these isotopes and you'll add them up. And... Um, Go ahead and add these three numbers in your calculator, but I'll, um, you should pause the video and then I'll have the answers written when you come back. So for my answer, I got 32.44 AMU. And if you remember, I had a guess about how, uh, what the average mass would come out to be similar to, and my guess was it would be pretty close to 33. And you can see that 32.44 is close to 33. It's much closer to 33 than it is to um, the other two numbers. Actually, I guess now that I said that, I can see that it's pretty close to 32 as well. But um, I wasn't very far off, and I did say it was just an estimate. So this is pretty close to my estimate. Um, you will find um, this number um, in this form, like a, a decimal number, like a, a whole number with a decimal attached. You'll find that on the periodic table. And this particular isotope is made up, so you won't necessarily find this one on the periodic table. But um, whenever you see atomic mass on the periodic table, you'll see, you know, a number with decimals, and it'll look like that. And just the reason, the way they arrived at that answer, is by doing this math right here. They'll take the mass of an isotope of that element, multiply it by the abundance, and they'll get this number. And then they'll do that for every isotope, and they'll add them all up, and it'll equal their atomic mass. Quote, unquote. All right, so um, we have arrived at the pair up, and in the pair up today, um, just copy down the information right here, where it says an element has three isotopes, one isotope has a mass of 50, um, abundance of 25, the second has a mass of 55, abundance 5, the third has a mass of 60, abundance 70. And I want you to um, answer both of these questions in the pair up tomorrow. But get all the information copied down now um, into the classwork section of, of your binder and also the summary as well. Hopefully, when I see you guys in class, um, just this part won't take very long at all. And then the summary can be at the end. And in the middle, I want us to work on this guy. This is a worksheet I've developed for all of you. I will make photocopies of it so you don't need to copy it all down because it's, you know, it's a table. It has quite a bit of information. Um, I'll make photocopies of this, and we'll work on this in class tomorrow as well, and um, we'll get some classwork out of that. All right, um, so that's an introduction of what's going to happen tomorrow, and make sure you bring your Cornell notes, and have a lovely evening.